Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video I'm doing kind of a part two to my tips and tricks video that I did about a week ago um, and I'm going to be showing you some more advanced tips and tricks that you can use in Python. Again just to reiterate these are uh, mostly specific to Python and you cannot use these in other programming languages um, although that being said these will save you a lot of time so make sure you stick around and watch all of them as I guarantee at least one or two of them you'll find extremely useful um, for something that's in your use case. Uh, a lot of this stuff is for more advanced programmers. That being said, still stick around if you're a beginner because um, you'll probably learn a little bit and see some new tricks, but you might not see the use case for it unless you write maybe more advanced programs to say. Okay, so let's get started. I'm just going to copy out. I have an another file open just to save us a bit of time here. I have two lists, A and B. Now the problem we want to solve here is we want to find the intersection between A and B. So like what elements are the same in each of the lists? Now we could go through a for loop, we could check every element in here with every element in here, but that takes too long. I don't want to write a for loop, so let's use this trick. So first of all, uh, we're going to use something called a set, and a set is just, it's kind of like a list, um, just a different type of list in a way in Python that has some cool methods for it. And one of the methods it has is intersection. So you don't need to import anything, all you have to type is set A, so whatever the first set is and then dot intersection with an, any other iterable item. So uh, for example, a list, a dictionary, another set, um, those are all things you can put in this intersection parameter here. So if I run the program, you can see we get three and a, um, and those are the common items between the set. That's really useful. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could convert this into a list, um, do whatever you want with it. Okay, so the next one, um, I'm just going to again copy out another list to save us some time like this uh, and I have this thing called import iter tools which is a really useful module in Python I'm going to be doing some tutorials on that later on um, and it allows you to just implement some cool things and save you a lot of time so what I want to do is I want to get a new list um, that has all of these elements in it and I want it to look something like this like that, okay? Now, if you know how to do this, you know that this is a little bit difficult. Uh, you could write like a recursive algorithm to do this. Um, you could do it with for loops, um, but it is a little bit difficult. And you, if you throw something like this in there, uh, it could make it a bit harder as well. So let's go ahead and just use this trick. So I'm gonna say new A is equal to list. I'm just gonna convert this into a list so we can see it. Iter tools dot chain dot from underscore iter, oops, is how you spell it, iterable A, and then I can simply print to the screen new A. Uh, now this is something you might wanna write down because it's probably hard to remember, but you're just importing iter tools and you're gonna do chain dot from iterable and all this is gonna do is simply break this list into one list. Uh, so I'll show you, it gives me one, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't have to write a bunch of for loops or anything like that. Um, just to note, if I did do something like this, and I put like a seven, so a non-iterable item in this main list, that's gonna crash our program. Um, so it has to be consistent uh, in terms of that working. I hope that makes sense. You guys can play around with it if you wanna learn more about it. Okay, this one is really useful if you're coding like um, problems, I wanna say, uh, like programming problems. As a lot of the time they're gonna ask you to, like the first integer is gonna be um, how many inputs you're about to receive and then there's going to be spaced by one and then you're going to uh you're going to want to break that into a list so for example like it's going to tell you that in the console you're going to have it be expected like 20 inputs separated by commas um and you want to put that into a list or something like that um so this will just do it for you uh you'll see how exactly it works once i start typing it uh in here and if you don't know how any of these functions and stuff work that I'm using currently. Um, I have tutorials on my uh, channel that are advanced or intermediate Python programming tutorials and they kind of go through all this more in depth because I'm just kind of skimming it right now. I'm um, showing you how you more use it rather than how it works. Okay so pretty much what this does is it's going to get input um, so us typing uh, in the console and it's going to split it so by space so we're going to space things out and then what it's simply going to do is convert that into an integer um, and then it's going to put it into a list and return that value. So typically the way that you would do this is you'd use a for loop um, and then you'd convert things into integers and then you'd append them into a list. Uh, this just makes it a lot easier. 
So now it's gonna ask me to type stuff in. So I'll do one, four, 67, eight, nine, zero, like that. And then you could see I get a list um, of all of these elements. And I just separated each of them by space so it knew it was a new element. If you wanted to have them separated by like a comma, change the split to a comma. You can do something like one, two, three, four. And then I get, again, one, two, three, four in a list form. Okay, so let's just comment these out because I don't wanna have to type that in every time that I uh, run the next ones. Okay, this one's really useful as well. Um, it's gonna be using something called collections. So from collections, import counter like this, okay? I'm just gonna create a new list. Say my list is equal to one, two, three, four. And I'm simply gonna print counter my list. I'll just show you what this does and then we'll kind of go through it. Um, so pretty much what it does is it's gonna give you a dictionary of a, like a key value pair. So for example, in my list, I have the element one, it occurs one time. In my list, I have the element two, it occurs one time. In my list, I have the element three, it occurs one time, four, so on. Again, if I do something like this, I'm just gonna add a bunch of fours in here just to show you how this works. Then you can see now I have four, it occurs four times one and it actually orders them by um, most occurrences uh, as it goes through the list, which is really useful. So rather than um, if you wanted to count all of like the A's and all of the B's and all of the C's in a list, um, you could use a for loop. You can say if element equals A, add one to uh, the very or add one to the list or the dictionary A. Um, this just does it all for you using this handy little thing called counter which I'm going to be doing some tutorials on uh, on my channel later because it is really useful how this uh, little counter thing works. And again, you have to import counter from collections, which is a built-in module in Python. You don't have to install anything. Okay, this next one is really cool too. So I'm just going to make two more lists here, uh, four, five, six. And this is the zip function. Um, so I'll show you how it works in terms of a for loop, and then I kind of go through it um, more in depth in just a second. So pretty much what this is gonna do is it's gonna combine our two lists together. And I just gotta like finish typing this and then I can kind of talk about it. Okay, so what this zip function is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to sum these two elements um, or each element of the list together um, just a lot easier. So what zip actually does is it takes uh, as many iteratable items that you want. So like a list, a tuple, a dictionary, a set, um, and then it's gonna combine elements together. So it's gonna give, and it's gonna return a tuple that looks something like this, one, four. And then it's gonna return another tuple uh, the next time we go through it, and it's gonna give me something like two, five. And then it'll give me another one, and it'll give me three and six. So when I say for i, j, in, zip, a, b, what it's first doing is it's giving me one and four, and then it's giving me two and five, and then it's giving me three and six. So I is gonna be assigned to one, J is gonna be assigned to four, and then I can add those up. So you might be able to see the use case for this um, if you program a lot, and you can see how exactly how it works. So I have my one and four equals five, my two and five equals seven, three and six equals nine. Um, and this is really useful to use, especially in a for loop, um, because you can combine multiple things together. And I could, even if I wanted to, if I had like a, I'll just say a, I could say a, oops, one like this. So I would get the first element and then I would get the rest of the list like that. And you can do things like that with the zip function, kind of play around with it and uh, you can figure out exactly how that works. I'm just gonna delete this now cause I don't want to uh, have it running all the time. Okay, so this is my last one. And this one is probably the coolest one and I saved it for last for that reason. Um, so I'm gonna make a list here. It has a bunch of words in it. You can see a few of them repeat, Tim, hello, hi, so on. And what I want to do is I want to count the uh, most occurrences of a word. So which word occurs the most in my list? So again, you could go the long route through it. Um, you could figure out all the unique words in the list and then you could count them and organize them and then sort them and see which one appears the most. Um, but what if I asked you, I wanna see like ranked which ones occur the most? Well, then you'd say you could use the counter. But what if I say, I want to see the top two names that appear in the list? Then you would use the method that I'm about to show you now. So let's make a new variable called words.count is equal to our counter, which I showed just above, words. And then I'm gonna say top underscore three, because or in this case, we'll do two, I guess, because I was using that before. Words underscore count dot most underscore common. Two. 
and let's just print top three to the screen here, top two to the screen. Okay, so this reads pretty well just like English. Um, it does exactly kind of what you would think it does. Um, so we have a variable called words count. It's going to get the count of all of the different words here in our uh, list. And I already went through that, how that works. And then now we want the top two words in our list. So we're going to use this count, which is, I believe, a set or a dictionary. You could check that if I wanted to. In fact, let's check this to see what type it actually is. The type of words. Underscore count. It might be its own type. We'll see. It actually has a method on it called most common, um, which is extremely useful. And you probably don't see this in any other programming language. And then you just put uh, how many of the most common elements you want. So in this case, I want two. So we're going to print to the screen. Okay, so it is its own type class collection. And it's going to give me Tim, which occurs three times and hi, which occurs two times. So not only does it just tell me the ones that occur the most, it actually tells me how many times they occur, which is really useful um, <laughs> information that you might want to have. So let's just do most common four, which I believe is how many different words I actually have. And we say, Tim, hi, hello, um, goodbye. And I believe for these ones, um, since I've put four and there's other words that occur just one time, like cool, um, it's just going to give me the ones that occurred first in the list. It's kind of intuitive. Like that's how you'd think it works. I do most common one. Then it just gives me a list and it just has Tim, which occurs three times uh, like that. Anyways, that has been it for this tips and tricks video. I hope you guys learned something and you can apply some of the stuff that I've showed in here uh, to some of your programs. If you ever forget any of this stuff, just come back to the video and uh, have a look at it. I'm actually going to post a link in the description, which is like a paste bin thing that has um, like a little document, a little Python document that has all this stuff in here that I've been coding so that you guys can um, just copy and paste it into your own program. You don't have to worry about memorizing anything. Anyways, that's been it for this video. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.